Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, The Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum and, once inside the house, he began to ask them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the 12, and said to them, if anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. I want to get a piece of business out of the way uh, first, and then I'll, I'll give my homily uh, after that. Uh, I just want to say, I don't know if you've already seen in the diocesan newspaper, uh, but the uh, Church of the Holy Family, we have met our House of Charity goal. And not only have we met it, but we've exceeded it. Our goal was 201,000, and to this day we have raised $216,000. Thank you so much. <laughs> to remind you, we do receive back 20% of the goal, which would be around 21,000, and anything over the goal, we get back about 80%. So we're looking right now at a little bit over $30,000. That $30,000 that we do receive back, we don't just keep for ourselves, but there are a number of uh, ministries that we give back to, even with the money that we receive. And some of the main ministries we give back to are Catholic education uh, for uh, children who cannot afford a Catholic school. We also give uh, quite a bit back to vocations and also to our seminarians to help the diocese pay for their tuitions. All of you know, I would assume, what uh, college tuition costs. And also to give the seminarians a little pocket money. I don't think they receive any stipends at all. I know the Knights of Columbus uh, help out a lot in that regard, but so too do we. At least this way they can have some uh, pocket money for gas, right, to get home uh, from Seton Hall, Seton Hall and all the rest. So I want to read to you um, about the Catholic Strong uh, capital campaign. Seems like we're doing both things at once, but uh, please bear with me. Over the past several weeks, you have heard members of our parish and myself speaking about Catholic Strong. It's a diocesan-wide campaign effort that will help fulfill Bishop Sullivan's vision for the diocese. This historic campaign will invest in our local parish communities and support schools, evangelization, and service ministries across South Jersey. Because of our outpouring of generosity from many committed families here in our parish and across the diocese on Catholic Strong, I want to let you know that approximately 35 million 
will go towards addressing parish needs and strengthening our parish communities. Approximately three million will be allocated for programs to go beyond the church walls and share the faith as missionary disciples of Jesus Christ. Approximately four million will be allocated to service programs such as addiction healing services, assistance to new groups of marginalized individuals, and legal support services. Approximately eight million will be allocated to our schools for scholarship assistant investment in challenging educational programs, professional enrichment, and a strong central schools office. Our parishes are the heart of our church and must be vibrant to prepare and nurture the next generation of Catholics. With that, from now through early 2019, every parish will participate in the Catholic Strong Campaign. 70% of the total funds raised during the campaign will be allocated directly to our parish. Now that doesn't mean the whole diocese, it just means what we raise here. A parish share of this magnitude has never happened before in our diocese, and I am confident that this will result in a significant infusion of support for our parish communities. In our parish, that 70% will help to address the following. Uh, I don't have that list with me. We've already put that list in the bulletin a number of times, but if you need access to it, it is now up on our website, Facebook, and it was also in the email blast. We will also put it back in the bulletin uh, for next week, so you can see each and every category. Now, depending on the money that we raise, some things may need to be shifted, and with consultation from the Finance Council, we may deem things more important than others and uh, go accordingly. I am thrilled to tell you that for several months, I have been working hard with all of our campaign leadership to build momentum for the campaign. I want to say thank you to our campaign volunteers for all their dedicated time and efforts. Additionally, thank you to those of you here today who have already submitted your pledge to Catholic Strong. It is because of the collective time, talent, and treasure of our leaders and supporters that I am able to tell you that, as of today, we have already secured $500,000. That is pretty incredible. Also considering that we raised another 216000 for the House of Charity. However, we still got a ways to go because our total goal was $1.275 million. So what we've collected so far represents about 40% of our goal. This coming week will be a pivotal moment for us, and in order to achieve success, we need your help. We are off to a great start. However, we are one parish community, and to be successful, we need the support of all the families within our community. We'll be taking time during the Masses next weekend to conduct our commitment weekend, during which we'll review the pledge card, and we'll be asking for your responses to our request for support we are seeking 100% participation from all the parishioners. Make sure you're here next week, or I will come to your house with the pledge card. <laughs> Over the next week, I will ask you to think about our parish community, the impact the campaign will have on it, and to consider your sacrificial gift, one that is right for you. Remember, once again, 70% of the funds raised in our parish will remain here. Again, thank you to all who have already contributed to the campaign to make it a success, and thank you in advance to those of you who will join us as co contributors next weekend. I ask you all to please to continue to pray for the success of this historic effort. Together we can achieve our campaign goal and always be Catholic strong. Now for the homily. So we heard in the uh, readings today, especially in that second reading and in the gospel, all about who is the greatest. If you stop for a moment to think about that, we do that all the time. We're always trying to figure out who's the best of the best. We do this in sports, 
For instance, we may argue, who is the greatest quarterback ever? Is it Tom Brady or Joe Montana? Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. It's Joe Montana, <laughs> because uh, he's from Notre Dame. And he has something that uh, Tom doesn't. He also has an NCAA championship. We'll also argue about actors and actresses, right? Who's the greatest at their craft? Is it Robert? De I guess I'm dating myself a little bit. Is it De Niro? Is it Pacino? And people will go back and forth, right? This one might be better. Oh, he was in this film and all the rest. We even argue about music. I remember back as a teenager, my friend Sergio was a huge Beatles fan, huge. And he would always say that they were the best ever. I used to argue with him all the time. No, they're not the best. The Rolling Stones were better than the Beatles. You're not buying that one though, I guess. I get a couple of claps. Even, even in politics, right, or government will say, who's the greatest president ever, right? And usually comes down to two names, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln, right? There might be a couple others in there that might be in the same company. And we'll go back and forth until we try to figure this out. We do this even in school, right? Don't we have in the honors awards and the highest grade point average and the, the, you know, the, the, the homecoming queen and all the rest, the hall of fames. We always want to know who's the best. Jesus kind of turns that on its head a little bit. And he doesn't say for us not to try to achieve greatness, right? He's not saying to us, don't try to be the best of the best, but he's saying, if you do it, you should not be doing it for power, for prestige, or for money. You should be doing it for what? For service. If I want to be the greatest at what I'm going to do, then I must do that because of the people that I can help. And I'm a little biased in this, I guess, because I grew up with John Paul II. Right? And I know we're always going to compare future popes to him. It's just unavoidable. It doesn't mean that the ones who followed weren't good. But he had that something, I don't know, a little extra special, if you will. But when he used to speak about this, he would always refer to himself as a servant of servants. Right? So even though he was the head of the church, the number one man, if you will, he always introduced himself that way. Because he knew that in this position, that is how he can give the most help to others. It's a beautiful thing, and I try to think of that in my own life, because it's nice, I guess, to be recognized, right? I remember being in grade school, a couple times I wouldn't get recognized, I used to get upset. Oh, it should have been me. I gotta make sure I bring a better apple next time, right, and put it on the desk. But again, it's gotta be the right motivation. So I did decide to do something special beginning this year and following. Uh, I wanted to give someone an award as person of the year here at Holy Family. Now it was kind of hard because you have to pinpoint down to one person, right? Uh, and there's so many of you that do so much. But I wanted to really reflect and pray on this who gives so much of themselves because of that very notion that Jesus describes in the gospel about giving service to others? The person's here, they're probably trying to figure out who it is because I didn't really tell anybody. And the person who I chose this year, she's, she, 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 she's getting all nervous. <laughs> Come on up here with me, Jenny. Jenny Licata, folks. Anytime I ask her for something, she always says yes. Maybe because I'm big and intimidating. <laughs> but she says yes out of the bottom of her heart. So when I first arrived at Holy Family, probably I was here a month, and I got so many thank yous and well wishes, but Jenny had been in Rome 
right? Uh, while Father Hughes was making the move up to being Vicar General, and I was taking his position here, Ginny got me a papal blessing. It was beautiful. I got it framed. It's in my office. And it reminds me so much, not only of her love, but all of your love. So when I kind of brainstormed about what we can give, I didn't want to give her a trophy or anything like that or some big plaque thing. So I did the same for you. We contacted the Vatican and got you a papal blessing. I also put this sign up because we're going to the diocesan pilgrimage in October and I asked her for something else. I said, Ginny, can you make a banner? <laughs> she got scared and said yes. So thank you for that as well. Please hang this up in a prominent place in your home. Know that we love you and uh, you're the best of the best, Ginny.